Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's show of Ask the Colorado Dreamhouse team. I'm your host, Dan Palomino, coming to you live from Denver, Colorado. Hope your week's been going great and you're out there and enjoying the fall in Colorado. This is going to be one of the best weekends to get out and take a look at the aspens and all the different leaf colors. And if you're back east, I think from talking to my family, you still got a couple more weeks to go, but it's starting to look pretty good. So get out there and enjoy the fall colors. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is all about real estate. We help you buy, sell, invest, and strategize the real estate market. And you don't have to be in Denver, Colorado. It works. This advice works in any part of the country. As always, we would love it if you uh, would leave comments and ask questions. It just makes the show so much better. So you can leave your questions and comments right here on Facebook. You can email us or you can call us at 720-446-6325. All right, so two things we like to accomplish in every show. We like to give you a little market information, and we like to answer your questions. So let's get to the market information. First off, we here at the Colorado Dreamhouse team have five properties coming on in the next eight days. All right, so again, just like we had been talking about in August, Met with a lot of people. A lot of people wanted to get their home on the market here in the fall and see if they could get it sold before the holidays. Uh, and we've been rushing to get these properties to market. So if you're a buyer out there and you haven't been finding what you want, call us. We might have one of these new listings that we're putting on in the next eight days may be the perfect fit for you. So call us at the Colorado Dreamhouse team and let us tell you what we've got coming to market. All right. That's number one. Number two, I was in a discussion with some friends today called You Pay Either Way, right? And it was really about fixing up your house and trying to update your house and keep your house up to date with the trends. And my wife and I, back in 2012, got on a plan. I put us on a plan. I said, we're going to do roughly two, maybe three updates to the house a year for the next five years. So that somewhere at the end of five years, we had about 10 or 15 different projects done. And it included everything from something as simple as changing the hardware and the light fixtures in the house to remodeling the kitchen, uh, remodeling all of the bathrooms with up-to-date granite, quartz, tile, um, to new flooring, inside paint, outside paint to even a big job, which was replacing all of the windows in the house. Finishing the basement, um, we had a really long list, and the priority was really based on money, right? Cash flow, how we were doing. But biting it off in little bits, like two projects a year for five years, really made a big difference. And here we are six years later, and the house is completely updated. I mean, if I tried to find something to fix, change, paint, or upgrade, I couldn't. And my wife, Jennifer, would kill me if I did. Uh, but everything is fixed and done and ready to go. So we, if we decide to sell, can get that premium price. Now, some people will say, you know what? I'm, I'm just not into that. I'm not going to fix up my house. I'm not going to do updates. It's not, you know, we don't like doing that type of stuff. i just rather save my money. However, you are going to get a much lower price for your house. So let's take my street as an example. My house, I know what that appraised for, which was a premium price. And then my neighbor's house was for sale. Um, and my neighbor got about $60,000 less than I would have gotten for my house. And it was mostly because they had never done any updates uh, the whole time that they had lived there, which is fine. That's certainly your choice. But you're going to pay one way or the other. Because somebody would say, well, Dan, look at all that money you put into the house. You could have had that in your pocket. True, uh, but on the flip side, when you go to sell, you're going to get a lower price. So you either pay up front by improving your house and getting a higher price you sell, or you don't pay up front and improve your house, and you get a lower price when you sell. Either way, you're paying. And that was the title of this segment. Either way, you pay. All right? Questions. Dear Colorado Dreamhouse team, what type of inspection items would you consider normal to find when doing a home inspection? Yeah, th that's a great question. We see kind of the same stuff over and over again come up in inspection objections. Almost every inspector comes back and says, 
recommend that you clean, service, and certify the HVAC, right? They're not HVAC experts. They want to cover their butt, so they put in the inspection. Recommend that you have an HVAC professional come out, take a look, and make sure it's in good working order. See that a lot. In Colorado, we have radon gas in our soil. And so radon is a big thing in Colorado. You can read about it online. Many people believe that it could be a cause of cancer. It's a odorless uh, gas. And so a lot of times we'll have homes being tested for radon levels. And so we'll see that come up a lot in inspection items when a particular home has a high radon level. We'll see some uh, things about caulking around windows. We'll see things about cracked sidewalks. We'll see things about roof. Uh, every once in a while, we'll see some minor plumbing things. Um, and you know, not really too much electrical issues unless it's a really, really old house. But these are all very common that we see week in and week out in inspection reports. So if it hits your inspection report, don't panic. It's normal. Remember, the home inspector is getting paid to find something, right? <laughs> they, they almost have to find something wrong. I tell all of our buyers, when you do your inspection today, he is going to find something wrong, so don't panic, all right? We just got to figure out if it's major or minor. Major is structural. Whole nother show. Okay. Dear Colorado Dream House team, would you advise us to speak with a real estate e agent now, even if we're thinking about listing our home uh, not until the spring. Um, answer, absolutely. It's never too late to start interviewing people for the job, right? I mean, you may have gotten a referral from somebody. You may have heard about us or someone else. It's a great idea to get an idea of what it's going to take to get your home sold and prepped and ready to be on the market come that third week of March, right? Um, I'll tell you what we're doing here at the Colorado Dream House team. If there are people who are thinking about putting their home on in March, we're going ahead and doing a listing agreement now, and we're doing all the photography. Now, why would we be doing all the photography now? Because it still looks pretty. It's still green. There's still leaves on the trees. There's still flowers in the yard. And so we're getting all of the pictures done now. We're putting them in our bank, so to speak, here at the office. And then when we come on the market in March, we come on with beautiful green pictures, right? Because in March, there are no leaves on the trees. There's still snow on the ground, right? But we, don't, we take our photography now and bank it for later. If that sounds like a good option for you, give us a call here at the Colorado Dreamhouse team. Dear Colorado Dreamhouse team, how do you overcome an objection from a buyer about your location? Well, you can't pick up and move the house. So the answer to that is in the history of real estate, the only way to overcome a location objection is price. You may back to a busy road. You may back to power lines. You may back to something that's unsightly. You may back to whatever, a railroad not too far away. You're going to have to compensate in price. And the question always comes up, which is, well, how much? And that is not an easy answer. What you've got to do is you've got to find that sweet spot. And that sweet spot is where you're not leaving too much money on the table, right? And it's still compelling enough for a buyer to walk in and say, I know it backs to a busy road, but at this price, I can't pass it up, right? That's that sweet spot that we're going to try to find. And so we, we may inch the price down to try to find that sweet spot where it's so compelling that it makes somebody write an offer, okay? I hope that's helpful. A couple of things. Don't forget about our 250 marketing guarantee. What does that basically say? It says that our marketing here at the Colorado Dreamhouse team is better than all of our competition. And if it's not, we'll pay you 250 bucks. That simple. If you want more details about that, go to our website, coloradodreamhouse.com forward slash 250. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the fall. I'll talk to you again on Tuesday.